Frankincense is one of the gifts of the Magi. These kings came from afar. One king came from Persia. His name was Melkor, as legend would have it. Another came from India named Gasper, sometimes known as Jasper. And the other uh, third one came from Arabia and his name was Malthazar. Did you wonder why they came from these different areas and converged and traveled together? Well, it is interesting the different stories around these three kings as we know them. And I often wonder why they chose the gifts they chose. Hi, I'm Mary Bourne, traditional naturopath, and I love sharing natural remedies with people. Natural remedies have been around for hundreds, even thousands of years because they work, and they work on people and sometimes pets. Well, legend would have it, Balthazar, the Arabian king, actually hailed from Ethiopia, and he was one that brought frankincense. This herb is often used in meditation or worship. It was a favorite. It is a favorite in the perfume industry. And some believe that it is how Mary and Joseph used it. Living in a stable for that period of time must have been rough. And by the time the kings got there, I'm sure that having this beautiful scented incense was really accepted well. The gold that was given, legend has it that Mary and Joseph used it to pay for the stable and uh, their trip <clears throat> returning home. And also myrrh is a is what is used in embalming. And we know that Christ was born to die on the cross and save us. So I love history and often throw in a little history when I present these classes. I hope you don't mind. Um, so what do you understand about the Magi? We know that these kings followed the star and that they probably had some interest in astrology, uh, looking at the skies. And of course, they must have had a great deal of curiosity. And I think curiosity leads to investigation or research. And that research leads to knowledge. So... <clears throat> This herb has been used for centuries. It is uh, one of the ancient Ayurvedic medicines, and it is the resin that comes from the trunk of the Boswellia tree. Now, this one is known as Boswellia serrata, but there are other Boswellia trees. And unfortunately, if these aren't harvested properly, these trees can die. And it takes a really, really long time for the tree to get to the point where you can scrape some of the bark and get the resin from it. Some of you have put up live Christmas trees and you will notice that there's sap on your hands if you dig close to the trunk of the tree or get close to the limbs that may be leaking some of this resin. So this also is uh, that type of a tree where it has that very sticky resin type. In fact, it has a lot of the chemistry that the pine tree has. And if you're interested in pine, I did a class not too long ago on uh, pine and the advantages of using pine. The oil from this tree, the Boswellia tree is, of course, known as frankincense, and it has been known to kill certain types of microbes like uh, bacteria and fungi. Um, it's 
commonly used in soaps and lotions and in perfumes. Now just breathing this oil in helps somebody to release the anxiety and stress that may be building up. It helps to clear the mind. And that is one of the reasons why it's popular for uh, meditation and uh, people love it for its relaxation effects. Not everybody likes the scent of frankincense. And so you can blend it with citrus oils like lemon or pink grapefruit. And in the winter, this is a really good thing to do. In the summer, uh, the citrus oils make us more sensitive to the sun. And so if you are somebody who loves to be out in the sun, uh, it really using the citrus oils, not a good option because you could burn more easily. But in the winter months, these citrus oils help us to absorb whatever little sunlight we get and to make the most of it. So one advantage of inhaling these essential oils is that infections often will linger in the sinus area. And if you breathe these in, it can kill off these infections. And if you catch it before it goes systemic, then you will probably save yourself a lot of time and misery uh, in not getting the whole condition. So there are a lot of wonderful ways to use uh, essential oils. And there is a link in the description below that will give you a 25% discount off your order. So make sure you use that. Um, let's talk a moment about inflammation because inflammation is considered a bad thing. But in the early stages, in the acute phase of an injury, it is necessary. It's how the blood flows to the area and brings with it healing elements. And these are often uh, particular cells that are geared to fight infection, to carry away uh, injured or dead tissue. Uh, there's a re repair uh, nutrients that are brought into the area to help um, deal with repair of the tissue. So inflammation in the acute phase is a necessary part of healing. But when that inflammation is continuous and constant, then it needs calming. And oftentimes inflammation will go chronic like this when you don't eat properly, you don't drink enough water, the body's not hydrated properly. And that's when you um, can help be helped with some targeted herbs. Now, I used the IF relief formula a couple of years ago. I sprained my ankles. I stepped off of a, a very high mat um, and twisted my ankle and injured it really, really bad. And actually had to learn how to get places by crawling on my knees because both ankles were injured. One was worse than the other. And I use this formula. I used it quite frequently because the big thing with the pain like that is that you want to get on top of it. And so if you can uh, take the product before uh, the pain is full force, then you're going to uh, accomplish a lot more and the inflammation will be reduced. I did a lot of topicals as well. I talk about comfrey. I've also done a video on that. I did comfrey compresses and uh, comfrey is known as bone hit, knitter and bone knitter actually um, helps with tissue healing. So exteriorly, I use that. Internally, I use the IF relief. 
And um, I healed those ankles in half the time it would have. Also, now, one of the indications of pain is that it tells you, stay off of it, stop using it. And when you use painkillers or pain relievers, you're stopping the message, but you're not actually contributing to the healing process. In fact, in some ways you can be slowing that healing process down because you're no longer feeling it and therefore you use it and uh, you shouldn't be. So I, um, pain can be a good, a good thing. And I've been uh, an herbalist now for over 40 years. I love doing research. Um, I like to check out different things. And I've noticed that the internet has been less than helpful in the last couple of years. A lot of the good information that I was able to get on uh, sources, they uh, have been bought out by the pharmaceutical industry and you can no longer find those. So one of my good friends and mentors, Stephen Horn, has an absolutely fabulous course that you can do at home. It's only $99. I encourage you to uh, either take a screenshot of this or I will link to his uh, website where you can purchase this course called Herbal Energetics. I think every household should have somebody who has an understanding of how herbs work and what you need to do in certain circumstances to lessen pain, to um, reduce the time of healing, uh, many things, because it isn't a type of thing where like drugs, you take a drug to um, accomplish a certain killing off of symptoms or deterring them. Herbs actually uh, assist in the healing process. And so I also feel that it's very important that you eat healthy food, that you drink good water, that you breathe in good air, and that you are conscious of the fact that it is your responsibility to take care of your body. And the sooner you teach your children to do the same thing, the better off they will be. So my philosophy is that I would rather do something natural, uh, take some herbs um, before I have to uh, take drugs. Um, I know a lot of things on the internet, they say, you know, check with your doctor, but you have to understand, not only have doctors not been trained in nutrition, they certainly have not been trained in herbs. And so they're not gonna know what's best for you. So I think it's important that you do your own research, get some books on herbs and, and uh, learn how your body works and understand the uh, influence of different actions. The whole idea of taking herbs is to get the body back into balance. And so uh, this is a great master class um, that you can take that uh, is a little investment. And during the winter months, it's a great time. If you're a gardener, uh, you're in your slow time right now. Uh, in February, you may start seed starting, but January is a good time to do some research and uh, get involved with what you can do to support your own health and to support the health of others. So food is our medicine, but it can also be our downfall. And so I would like you to make sure that you're choosing nutritionally dense food that contribute to good health. Um, I hope you continue to have a blessed 2022 and that um, if you need any additional help that you comment below, if you need specific help, then I would encourage you to email me, Dr. Mary at bornforhealth.com. I would love to hear from you. And until next time, this is Dr. Mary for the health of it.